Few events in modern history in the 20th century have had such a profound impact on the world as the seemingly small decision made by Italy to abandon its commitment with the Triple Alliance, with Germany and Austria-Hungary, and instead join the Entente in the Great War. This decision has been the subject of much speculation and misunderstanding. At that time, both Italy and Germany were relatively new kingdoms, having unified only in recent decades. They shared similar goals of expansion and establishing themselves as regional powers. One might expect them to be natural allies, with their common enemies and minimal overlapping territorial ambitions. However, something went awry. Why did this promising alliance crumble and contribute to the downfall of the central powers, leading to an Entente victory in the war? The main catalyst for Italy's betrayal of the Triple Alliance was Germany's alignment with the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Throughout Italy's struggles for unification, Austria had consistently sought to suppress and thwart any attempts at Italian unity. For centuries, Italy had been the playground for Austrian dominance, and they were determined to maintain control over their remaining sphere of influence. It is worth noting that the historical relationship between Italy and France, who under Napoleon III supported the Italians in their fight against Austria during the unification process. In our timeline, when Germany attempted to bring Italy back into the fold of the Triple Alliance, Austria-Hungary rejected the idea of ceding territories in exchange for Italian support in future conflicts. This led to the Trentino Crisis, a two-year period of heightened tension starting in 1902, during which Italy demanded the region of Trentino and the border city of Treste. Germany intervened as a mediator to preserve the Triple Alliance, but their efforts proved to be futile. Italy, realizing that siding with Germany and Austria would not secure their coveted Adriatic territories, signed a secret non-aggression treaty with France in 1902, anticipating the lack of territorial gains from the Austrians. Eventually, Italy joined the First World War on the side of the Entente against Germany and Austria. Despite lacking significant industrial power or the military forces required to breach the Austrian Alps, Italy played a crucial role in the conflict. The creation of a new Italian front diverted German and Austro-Hungarian forces that were crucial for securing certain fronts and relieving the pressure on the stretched front lines for the French. Italy's participation in the war also confined the Austro-Hungarian navy to the Adriatic Sea while Italy also served as a vital base to isolate the Ottoman Empire as well. By aligning with the Entente, Italy reduced the burden on the French, who now only had demanded one front line, enabling a concentration of forces necessary to halt the German advance. This highlights the often overlooked significance of Italy's position in the Entente, and how their entry into the war, or even their decision to remain neutral and not side with the Central Powers, was pivotal in saving the Entente's war effort. Before we jump in, don't forget to like the video, hit the subscribe button, and the notification bell as well to stay updated with all of our historical adventures. I want to invite you to join my Patreon or channel membership community. By becoming a member, you'll gain exclusive access to behind-the-scenes content, early releases, and special perks. Your support not only helps me continue making the videos, but it also ensures that you receive more unique quality content just like this. Now, back to the video. But what if this all changed? There are some major changes that would have been needed for Italy to join the Central Powers. The most important would be diplomatic changes between Germany and Austria-Hungary. In this alternate timeline, Austria-Hungary is more heavily influenced and submissive to the German Empire than they were in real life. Here, during the Trentino Crisis, Germany appeased Italy and ensured their continued alignment with the Triple Alliance. Austria-Hungary, due to immense pressure from Germany, formalized the Bolzano Agreement. In the Bolzano Agreement, the disputes of Italy and Austria-Hungary were mediated and solved by Germany. Austria-Hungary agreed to cede territories of Trentino and the city of Trieste to Italy in return for monetary compensation and Italy's military commitment to the Central Powers. Germany saw the value of an Italian ally if war were to break out, and rather than letting Austria-Hungary destroy the Triple Alliance, they pressured them to give up these territories for the greater good of the Alliance. There were additional secret agreements made between the three powers in the event of eventual wars with the Allies. Italy was promised French lands up to the Rhone River, including the major cities of Lyon, Grenoble, Avignon, and Marseille. They would also take Corsica, Algeria, and Tunisia from the French, and Egypt from the British, but they would give up the Suez Canal to the Germans. Austria-Hungary agreed to discuss a transfer of Dalmatia and South Tyrol following any major conflicts. The Italians, now satisfied with the immediate gains of ethnically Italian lands, while also being promised lands in the future, pledged their loyalty to the Triple Alliance once again. World War I still broke out on July 28, 1914, but now things were different. Italy eagerly joined the conflict, thereby opening up a second front for France in the formidable Western Alps. 
the Italian forces also established additional fronts in French and British North Africa, strategically stretching the Entente defensive lines. This significantly favored the implementation of the Schlieffen Plan by the Germans, as the thinner French line could not effectively counter the German advance. The rapid German advance brought them dangerously close to the French capital. By September of 1914, the German army, with Italy's support, advanced dangerously close to Paris, coming within 20 miles or 30 kilometers of the city. The majority of spare soldiers were deployed to the two front lines, where their presence was urgently required, eliminating the need for a substantial military presence on the Italian border. While this was ongoing, the Italians broke through the French lines in the south and captured Marseille. On October 6, 1914, Paris was captured by the Germans and the war was shaping up to be a large German victory, even larger than the previous Franco-Prussian War. The fall of Paris dealt a severe morale blow to the French and the rest of the Entente powers. In the Eastern Front, the Russians were still crushed at the Battle of Tannenberg in August 1914, effectively destroying the Russian army. Minor cities were occupied by Germany and Austria-Hungary by the year's end. In the meantime, the Austro-Hungarians swiftly marched into Serbia. Serbian resistance, although valiant, was gradually worn down by the advancing Central Powers. Moreover, the combined navies of Italy, Austria-Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire began to gain control in the Eastern Mediterranean, disrupting Allied naval operations and supply lines in the region. Despite this, the French and British navies bombarded Italy's vulnerable western coast. However, Italian forces, supported by Ottoman troops, achieved significant territorial gains, capturing Tunisia and Egypt. These territorial acquisitions provided the Central Powers with vital strategic advantages in the region. The absence of naval control over the Eastern Mediterranean prevented the Gallipoli Campaign, sparing Winston Churchill's reputation from the criticism it faced in our timeline. The German army consolidated its position in France and established a strong defensive line along the River Seine, while the offensive in the West continued on gradually pushing the remaining French and British forces back towards the Atlantic. The Italians consolidated their position in the Alps, removing the last French resistance, and planned another push in the following year. The disarray within the Entente, caused by the loss of Paris, resulted in the capture of key industrial areas and disrupted supply lines. As the war continued to sour, internal strife began to arise within France, leading to political instability and divisions within the government. The Russian front developed well for the Central Powers, as the Germans and Austro-Hungarian forces, supported by Italian troops, pressed further into Russian territory. The Central Powers employed combined arms tactics, utilizing infantry, artillery, and cavalry to advance swiftly. Russian defenses were weakened due to the diversion of resources to other fronts and internal unrest. The key cities of Warsaw, Minsk, and Riga were captured, further diminishing Russian morale and capabilities. These hurt Russian supply lines and allowed the Central Powers access to important industrial and resource-rich areas. During this year, Romania grew worried about the Central Powers' advance and secretly met with Russia, France, and Britain, and joined the Entente. Romania began preparations for mobilizing its military forces, training troops, and acquiring necessary equipment and supplies, with the goal of taking Transylvania from Hungary. The Central Powers continued their offensive, seeking to further weaken the Russian army and force a favorable peace settlement. The German and Austro-Hungarian forces maintained their pressure on Russian defenses. The Central Powers made significant territorial gains, including the capture of Kiev on February 1916, further disrupting the Russian supply lines. Russian resistance became increasingly fragmented as internal divisions and political instability exacerbated the situation. The Central Powers exploited these weaknesses, encircling and capturing large numbers of Russian troops, cementing the Eastern Front for the Germans. Bulgaria launched a coordinated offensive against Serbia in June, working in tandem with the Austro-Hungarian troops to encircle and defeat the Serbian forces. By late 1916, the Central Powers succeeded in capturing Belgrade and other key cities, bringing Serbia under their control. However, the Romanians took advantage of the Austro-Hungarians' focus on other fronts and launched their offensive catching them completely off guard. Romanian troops, supported by Russian forces, aimed to reclaim territories such as Transylvania, Bokivna, and parts of Banat, which had significant ethnic Romanian populations and were under Austro-Hungarian control. Initially, the Romanian offensive achieved some success, pushing into Austro-Hungarian territory and raised hopes for significant territorial gains, but they failed to take any major cities by the year's end and the front became stagnant. Germany and Italy continued their push into France, weakening the French military and causing more divisions within the country. The German offensive put significant pressure on the British forces, threatening their supply lines and forcing them to retreat. 
Italy advanced across the Durance and Isere rivers, taking Lyon and all of Provence from French forces, forcing them to retreat and eventually consolidate their defensive positions across the banks on the Rhone River. The Italians continued their offensive in Africa and conquered Algeria and Morocco as the Entente was already overstretched. At the same time, they launched an amphibious invasion of Corsica, subjugating the island by October. The German advance continued, gradually pushing the remaining Entente forces out of France and towards the west coast as they captured Rennes. The internal divisions within France worsened, leading to political turmoil and weakened military cohesion. Italy consolidated its territorial gains and reinforced its position in the Alps, effectively securing its border. The Italian Great Spring Advance breached the French defenses on the Rhone and took all of southern France. Clermont and Toulouse were captured with relative ease, as the French began a full capitulation. The remaining French government fled across the Channel to the safety of Britain. Germany and Italy, now firmly in control of France, focused on further weakening the British and sought a negotiated peace. The Central Powers intensified their offensive, aiming to deliver a decisive blow to Russia as well. Austria-Hungary concentrated its forces against Russia on the Eastern Front, taking advantage of the reduced need for German troops in the West due to the divisions caused by Italy. The weakened Russian army struggled to mount an effective defense, facing logistical challenges and dwindling resources. German, Austro-Hungarian, and Bulgarian forces continued their advance, capturing St. Petersburg and other strategic locations. In the meantime, the Ottomans opened up a separate front and began pushing again in the Caucasus. The Russian government faced mounting pressure and internal unrest as communism began to spread, forcing them to consider peace negotiations with the Central Powers. On March 23, 1916, facing the imminent fall of Moscow and the inability to continue the fight, the Russians signed a peace agreement with Germany. Without the Bolsheviks coming to power in time, Tsar Nicholas II survived, and his government signed the peace treaty, maintaining sufficient legitimacy for the British government to accept him into exile. A treaty similar to that at Brest-Litovsk was implemented. It granted the independence of Finland, German and Austro-Hungarian vassals in Eastern Europe, and territory for the Ottomans in the Caucasus, along with vassalized larger Caucasus states. We will go into the details later. The Balkan Front continued to develop well for the Central Powers. Austro-Hungarian forces conquered Montenegro, while Italian forces captured Albania. The Romanian Front was rebuffed by the combined Central Powers too. They were aware of the importance of the Romanian offensive, so they mobilized their forces and launched a counteroffensive. Austro-Hungarian and Bulgarian troops coordinated their efforts to halt the Romanian advance and push the Romanian forces back. The superior numbers, supply lines, and stability proved to be too much for Romania. The British fleet, heavily deployed in the Mediterranean to counter the Central Powers, adopted desperate measures to force a surrender, resorting to brutal tactics such as attacking civilian ships. This led to international condemnation and diminished the inclination for the United States to join the war on the Entente side, given the perceived hypocrisy. Additionally, the Zimmerman Telegraph was never sent due to the German domination in the war, so America had no incentive to join for England. Also note that Greece would not join the Allies in 1917 here due to the Central Powers' strong position, so they remained neutral. The Central Powers' push into Romania was a rout. Romanian forces experienced significant setbacks, losing territory, and they faced the risk of encirclement. They quickly sued for peace after the Bulgarians took Bucharest in July. The Central Powers, having achieved significant territorial gains in crippling the Entente military, intensified their diplomatic efforts for a negotiated peace. The British naval failures, as well as the lack of American aid, made their position untenable. The exhausted Entente powers recognized the futility of continuing the war and agreed to peace negotiations. World War I was over, and the Central Powers held hegemony over Europe and the globe. Peace negotiations were held in Frankfurt, another point of humiliation as this was a city where the peace conference was held after France's embarrassing defeat in 1871 after the Franco-Prussian War. Italy achieved significant territorial gains from the peace negotiations. They acquired Provence, Corsica, Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco, and Egypt was a bit of a tricky situation as it became a point of contention within the Central Powers as Italy refused to cede the Suez to the Germans as they had agreed to before the war. The Germans had no troops in Egypt and were forced to agree to this, but they were unhappy and felt cheated by the Italians. Italy also acquired Malta, Albania, and the Dodecanese Islands in the Aegean Sea. Additionally, they also had some territorial concessions from Austria-Hungary in exchange for monetary compensation. These included South Tyrol and Dalmatia. But it is important to note that in Dalmatia, Austria retained some crucial ports to the Mediterranean, 
similar to the situation between Croatia and Bosnia today. Austria-Hungary experienced minor territorial gains in the peace negotiations, as they acquired Montenegro, most of Serbia, some expansion into former Russian lands, and some expansion into Romanian territory. They also set up a puppet Romanian government in Bucharest. However, the most important factor for Austria-Hungary was their ability to stabilize its diverse empire by federalizing after the war, and they implemented measures to address ethnic tensions, stabilizing the empire further. Bulgaria gained territory at the expense of Serbia, acquiring the rest of it. They also annexed Dobruja from Romania. The Ottoman Empire had substantial territorial expansion as they annexed the British Middle Eastern holdings, Cyprus, and the Sinai Peninsula. The Germans emerged as a major beneficiary of the war. They had the most territorial expansion. These included Alsace-Lorraine, parts of Belgium, the establishment of a puppet state in the other half of Belgium, the annexation of Luxembourg, they also had many Eastern European territories that were released as German puppets and controlled by their government. These included Poland, who Germany took some land from, Finland, Uta, Karelia, Ingria, Lithuania, Ukraine, Ruthenia, the United Baltic Duchy, Crimea, which was in turn given to the Tartars, Georgia, the Don Cossacks, the Kuban's People's Republic, and the Mountain Republic, which was led by the Circassians and the Chechens. The Entente powers, particularly France, lost many of their colonial holdings overseas, and especially in Africa. The Germans took many French colonies, including Zambia and Nigeria, as well as the Congo from Belgium. This established Middle Africa as a colonial entity for the Germans, uniting their new colonies with their previous ones in Africa. France faced severe repercussions in the peace negotiations. They were required to pay heavy war reparations to the Central Powers, and they lost their navy to the Italians. The French were utterly humiliated by the outcome. Following the treaty, Germany became a global hegemon alongside the United Kingdom and the United States. The German economy grew dramatically and their power grew exponentially. The Soviets still took power in Russia as mass uprisings erupted after the peace treaty, but they were crushed by German forces sent to ensure stability and maintenance of the status quo relative to the Bolshevik radicalism. This led to the establishment of the constitutional monarchy under Alexei II, the former son of Nicholas II. France underwent political turmoil and initially turned towards communism in the French Civil War in 1921. However, German and Italian armies crushed the communists and instated the Fourth French Republic. Despite heavy German interference, the Italians became more influential in France as the two began to heal their relationship. However, France was still unstable and constantly on the brink of civil war, with a major fascist party growing in popularity. Italy was a de facto power over the Mediterranean, and they now had vast territory necessary to jumpstart their industries. They became a true great power that had a large industrial capacity by the time of the 1920s, and soon they set their sights on conquests of Greece, Anatolia, France, and Iberia, as the opportunity to reform their great Roman Empire seemed more likely than ever. Italy began to distance themselves from the Germans as the Germans viewed the Italians as a junior partner in their alliance, not an equal member. Italy, in turn, grew slowly closer to the UK and the United States, who were both wary of the German threat. The United Kingdom was bitter about the war's outcome and secretly signed the Treaty of London in 1924, promising Italy control over Gibraltar, the Balearic Islands, Anatolia, Cyprus, and the Levant. In return, Italy, while still a member of the Central Powers, agreed to leave and join the Allies in a future conflict, should one arise. Do you think Italy would go on to conquer their ancient Roman lands, or would they continue their alliance with the Central Powers? Let me know in the comments below. Just remember, while Italy was not the most important factor in World War I, their aid was instrumental in deciding the outcome of the war and the future of all of Europe. If things had gotten different, the world as we know it would look very different, and the long-term effects would be drastic. Comment and let me know how you think history would have changed if Italy joined the Central Powers. Share your thoughts in the comment section below. I'm eager to hear your insights. And remember, if we reach 3,000 likes on this video, I'll release a part two to explore the outcomes further. If you're interested in my sources, list of historians, books, recommended reading, original maps, my maps, images, scripts, outlines, new channel announcements, and more, please consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a channel member. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, hit the subscribe button, and the notification bell to stay updated with our historical adventures. Be sure to click here to watch some of my other videos. Until next time, fellow history enthusiasts, goodbye.